A few years ago, I attended a ministerial gathering for continuing education and learning. It was Unitarian Universalist ministers from all over the world coming together for continuing education and companionship. And the brochure for this event promised transformation. It said, come and transform your ministry. Come and you will be transformed. And the first night of the gathering, the minister who led worship was actually CLF's Minister Emerita, Jane Jepka. Now Jane, if you know her, is a very underspoken, very humble person. And she said, you know, all this transformation that we're talking about, maybe it'll happen and maybe it won't, but the truth is, couldn't we settle for small t transformation instead of capital T transformation? Couldn't we say, actually, we're kind of okay the way we are. She said, when I look out, I really love each of you just the way you are. And I, I just want to say it's okay with me if you don't have radical transformation here. Well, that's Jane's pastoral message. And I'll tell you that that engendered this discussion for the rest of the week that got intense between the people who were happy with small t transformation, kind of saying, you know, we're pretty okay, let's just go about our way. And the people who wanted big changes in Unitarian Universalism, in our congregations, in our ministry, in our worship. And so this small t transformation, capital T transformation, became this ongoing conversation that kept getting lifted up in worship, in workshops, in lunch conversations. It was interesting to me because I absolutely see both sides of that. I long for our movement to have what would be called capital T transformation, radical changes around issues of classism, racism, inclusivity of people of all kinds of mental illness and disabilities. I long for that kind of radically inclusive faith that we are struggling to find. That's true. I long for that capital T transformation that would allow us to have more emotion in our worship services, that would allow us to call out amen without looking around and seeing if somebody's going to be upset, that would allow us to use a variety of languages to talk about what's holy without worrying that someone would be offended and someone else wouldn't understand us. So I long for that capital T transformation. At the same time, in my life, I've seen that mostly what we do is small t transformation from all of my years of activism, from all of my years of ministry, and from all of my years of fumbling along on the earth as a human being. I see that in the words of Simon and Garfunkel, after changes upon changes, we are more or less the same. And so while I long for this radical change, the more practical part of me says, yeah, we're always going to be pretty much who we are, but, you know, trying to be a little bit better. Lynn Unger, the Minister of Lifespan Faith Development here, pointed out that this tension is actually held in Unitarian Universalist principles where we state what we hold most precious. One of those principles is acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth. So it's kind of a both and. Some Christians that I know say, God loves you just the way you are, and God loves you too much to want you to stay that way. So here as we reflect this month on transformation, the first question that the worship team asked ourselves is, why? Why do we want transformation? And some people I know very well say, I don't. I want no part of that. One woman that I knew got so angry about the conversation of caterpillars turning into butterflies that she said, I never want to hear the word chrysalis again. And I thought, who knew that butterflies transformation could upset someone so much? I think what this notion does is it sometimes hits us where we've been told by other people that we need to change. I don't know about you, but when people say to me sometimes, oh, I'll pray for you, I want to back up and say, keep your prayers off of me. Thank you very much. I am happy the way I am. Certainly as a lesbian, there have been many people who have prayed for me to have a different sexual orientation. 
And that kind of trying to transform someone else is an act of violence. Trying to make somebody conform to who you think they should be. That, I think, is why for so many people this notion of transformation is fraught with anger and shame and rebellion and all kinds of other things. So what we're inviting all of us here to do is to start with why. Start with our own desire and intentions around transformation. Not starting with you should, you need to, if you're a good person, if you're spiritual, which is pretty much enough to guarantee any of us not to want to change because we're backed into a corner and we're going to defend ourselves. That's not what we want to do this month. We want to invite each person to reflect on what is it about you that isn't fully realized that you want to have transform and emerge and really live in the world. As a gardener, one of the things that I know is that I love the image of compost as part of what transformation means. So compost is taking all of your garbage, basically, and putting it into a heat process, kind of an alchemical process with straw and stirring it until it becomes the most fertile soil for growth, for new life. And I love the image of composting as a form of transformation. If we can take our garbage, take the hardest parts of ourselves and apply the heat of love and attention, stir them up with a little bit of consciousness and keep them a little bit damp, you know, a little bit of adding fluid to it, so that it can actually transform itself. It can alchemically become exactly what we need for fertility, for growth. So this month, as we explore the theme of transformation, I invite you to think about what it is you'd like to compost. What parts of yourself that feel like they're extra, they're not usable, can you pay attention to? Or the parts of yourself that feel like there's the most pain and they're the hardest, what can you do with your care and attention to move those into the world? Because I believe that in those hardest parts that each of us deals with, where each of us just wishes we were a different person and didn't have to deal with it, that right there, right there, is the place to offer the world the greatest gift by modeling that even there, even in that hardest, messiest, smelliest, moldiest place, there is life. There is new life. I hope that you will share your own transformations this month and that we can do this as a community and look at how we want to transform together. So yeah, you're okay, just the way you are. You are accepted here exactly as you are. And this community is fine, just the way it is, if we didn't do anything differently. And yet, because we're human, because of the longing in our hearts, we'll always be trying to get just a little bit further, to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit more. Only you can answer the question, do you want to transform? Why do you want to transform? And I hope that when you answer that question, the answer will always be, because it's fun, it's love, it's better, it's good. Not because I'm bad, because I have to change, because I'm wrong. You're not wrong. You're accepted just as you are here. And may we all find ways yet to be transformed.